Today we're going to learn about something called user-defined functions inside JavaScript. And this is something that's really important to know because you will be using functions all the time whenever you create some kind of JavaScript application. So I did actually think that I had created an episode on this before, but looking back on my series here, I realized that I forgot to do so. So we're going to do that today because we will be using it in the next episode when we learn how to create an image banner inside a website from scratch using JavaScript. So when it comes to functions that we call user-defined functions, it's slightly different than what we call built-in functions. A built-in function is a function that we have inside the JavaScript language, and a user-defined function is a function we build ourselves. Okay. Now, what's important to know about functions is that one function does one specific thing. So one function has one task, whether that being calculating a price for a website, let's say you have a shopping cart, or if you want to print out certain names inside the browser, then one function should do one thing. And the reason for that is that functions is something that we should be able to, to call on whenever we need to do one specific thing, okay? So if we were to create a function that does a bunch of things inside the function, then it might end up being so complicated that we can only use it for one thing inside the website. So we need to make sure that one function is so flexible that we can use it multiple times inside our website. Now to give you guys an example, let's say I have a website that has a image banner, you know, one of those that rotates and slides every couple of seconds inside a website. If I were to take my mouse cursor and move my cursor on top of the image banner, and I wanted to pause whenever the mouse is on top of the banner, then we use a function to activate the pause each time we enter with the mouse. If I were to leave with the mouse again, I wanted to continue and then we invoke another function that continues the loop inside the banner. So those two functions has one specific task, one needs to pause the banner and one needs to start the banner. So we start out by writing a function by writing the keyword function, which tells the browser that this is a function. Then we need to give the function some kind of name. So we're going to say, for example, my function. Again, you can name it any kind of name you want. I just decided to call it my function here. Then afterwards, we need to write curly brackets and then whatever code goes inside the function needs to go in between the curly brackets. So basically what we have here is a very basic function with nothing inside of it. So we don't have any code in here that will actually run when we do actually call on the function. So if I were to say that this function has to have a purpose, let's say I want to write out which person goes to which meeting. Let's actually go ahead and do that by saying document dot get element by ID parentheses and say I want to get this paragraph up here that has an ID as test and I want to insert some kind of text inside this paragraph whenever I call on this function. So let's actually go ahead and say we have a inner HTML which is equal to some kind of text. So if we were to say Daniel is attending the meeting on Friday like so. So whenever I call on this function, it will write Daniel's attending the meeting on Friday inside this paragraph up here. So if I were to actually go ahead and go down below the function and say that I want to invoke, which is actually what we call when we do actually call on the function, you know, actually activate it. I want to invoke the function called my function. So I'm going to say my function, parentheses, semicolon. And then if I were to actually load up this website inside the browser, you guys can see Daniel is attending the meeting on May 11th. So we do actually get the text inside the browser. Now, this was actually one way of doing it because right now, as you guys can see, I did actually insert the text directly inside the function. So it would actually pop up inside the, the paragraph up here. But typically inside a function, we do something called return, which is when we return a value inside a function that we can use later on inside our code. So if I were to go ahead and delete what we have, or at least delete the first part, until the equal sign. Now you guys can see we have the message and what I can do instead is say return Daniel is attending the meeting on Friday. Then below here where I did actually call in the function, I can instead say document dot get element by ID parentheses dot inner HTML is equal to my function. Let's actually go ahead and Spell it correctly, like so. Call on the ID called test. 
This is actually how we do it because right now returning the value inside the function and then I went ahead and took the value and inserted it inside the statement down here. So now if I were to go back inside my browser, you guys can see we get the exact same thing. Well, I could actually change the text to John is attending the meeting on Friday. So now you guys can actually see we got a different value inside the browser. Now, just to show you guys another thing when it comes to functions. Right now we have some kind of code that runs inside the function. We could actually go ahead and say something different, which is we could actually go ahead and insert parameters inside the function, which is actually something we do quite often inside JavaScript code. So if I were to go inside the parentheses of my function and say, well, at some point inside the function, when we do actually call on it, we will be using some kind of data from the outside the function. So I can go inside the function and say we have a piece of data called person, comma, because we want to have a second piece of data called date. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm saying that at a later point, when I want to use the function multiple times, I'm gonna go ahead and insert some data inside the function, which is then gonna take and do something with inside whatever's inside the curly brackets. So right now we did actually say John is attending the meeting on Friday. I'm gonna go and delete John. And before the double quote, I'm gonna say person, because this is a variable we call person. I didn't mention that, but this is in fact variables I inserted inside the parentheses. And then afterwards, instead of saying Friday, I'm gonna go ahead and delete what we have here and say plus date. So now we're getting the variables from inside the parentheses and inserting them inside the statement here. So right now, if I were to actually go back inside the browser and refresh, you guys can see it says undefined is attending the meeting on undefined. And that's because right now we don't have any kind of value inside the parentheses here. Right now, we're just saying that we want variable person and variable date to be inserted inside this return statement. And if I were to go down, when we do actually call on the function, we have no data inside the parentheses. So we need to insert two pieces of data because I inserted two pieces of variables up here. So we can actually write them out inside the browser. So if we were to go inside my function down here and say we have a string called Daniel, let's actually spell that correctly, like so. And I have a second piece of data called Thursday, like so. Then if I go inside the browser, you guys will notice that instead of undefined, we get the data we inserted. So Daniel is attending the meeting on Thursday. So this is how we can write functions inside JavaScript. Now, one more thing I want to mention is that when we want to activate functions, we can either do it by doing it directly inside JavaScript code like we did here. We can also do it whenever the person does something, you know, any kind of user does something inside our website, like putting the mouse cursor inside a banner that we have on our website as an example, or if the user were to click on something inside the website, we can actually activate these functions. So it's important to know that these functions don't actually run until we invoke them. So you shouldn't be afraid that we do actually use the function before we have actually invoked it. Functions are just something that keeps data and stores it until we actually call in the function. So it's not gonna do anything till we invoke it. A third example of when a function does actually run could be if I were to say, it had to run automatically at a certain point by writing some kind of JavaScript code that actually runs it automatically, then we can also do it that way. So now that we talked about functions, let's actually talk about what we're gonna do in the next episode because in the next episode, we're gonna learn how to create an image slider inside a website. And we're gonna create a really easy image slider that looks really cool, that actually slides between the images and has buttons in it so we can actually switch the images ourselves. And each slide might actually have some kind of text inside of it that actually slides with the image so we can change the text as we go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope you guys will look forward to the next episode when we do actually do something using the JavaScript we've been learning in all the episodes we've done so far. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.